This is what we need hydrogen for, and this is what media mostly covers with respect to demand. This is where hydrogen comes from, and this is what media mostly covers with respect to supply. Is our perception about hydrogen off reality? I'm Kata, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about it. The reality of hydrogen demand and supply is potentially a bit too boring or uncomfortable to confront. And the consistency principle may reinforce our biased perception. Today, hydrogen is mainly used in the refining and chemical sectors and produced from fossils, accounting for 6% of global natural gas use and 2% of coal consumption, and responsible for 830 million tons of CO2 emissions annually. And that's about 2.3% of the 36.4 billion metric tons of 2021's global CO2 emissions. Hydrogen demand has grown threefold since the beginning of its use in the 1970s. Out of the 73.9 megatons of hydrogen produced in 2018, 38.2 megatons was used in refining and 31.5 megatons in ammonia and 4.2 megatons in other applications. The demand for hydrogen continues to increase, but the supply of hydrogen is still almost entirely fossil-based, relying on natural gas and coal. However, as low-carbon hydrogen becomes available, it will become a decarbonization tool for various sectors, including energy-intensive industries, such as steel and cement. Plus, in steel production, hydrogen is starting to replace carbon as the reducing agent. The good news is that the emissions depend on the method of production of hydrogen, and we have technology to decarbonize it. Before we dive into what exactly green and blue hydrogen are, I'd very much appreciate if you could subscribe and hit the bell. You may have heard about green, blue and other colors of hydrogen, but what do they exactly mean? Hydrogen is of course a colorless gas. Green hydrogen is mainly produced by splitting water using electricity generated from renewable energy sources. The reason it is called green is that there is no CO2 emissions associated with the hydrogen production, nor with its usage. When used in a fuel cell, the only byproduct of its use is the pure water that was originally used in its production. Renewable hydrogen is generally more expensive than blue hydrogen, though prices are becoming more competitive. Black or brown hydrogen is produced from coal. The black and brown colors refer to the type of coal, bituminous for black and lignite for brown coal. The gasification of coal to produce hydrogen is a very polluting process, and CO2 and carbon monoxide are produced as byproducts and released into the atmosphere. And finally, there is blue hydrogen, which I frankly speak in and mildly put very much uh, disapprove of, just like brown and black hydrogen. Blue hydrogen refers to hydrogen derived from natural gas, which is of course a fossil fuel. However, most, although not all, the hydrogen emitted during the process is supposed to be captured and stored underground. That's called carbon sequestration, or it's supposed to be bound in a solid product, such as bricks and utilized. This is called carbon capture, storage and utilization. The paper How Green is Blue Hydrogen by Howard and Jacobson, linked in the description below, finds blue hydrogen CO2 emissions are only 9 to 12% less compared to gray hydrogen. And when including methane, the greenhouse gas footprint is 20% higher than burning natural gas or coal for heat, and 60% higher than burning diesel oil, it said. Political forces may not have caught up with the science yet, Howard said. Even progressive politicians may not understand for what they're voting. Blue hydrogen sounds good, sounds modern, sounds like a path to our energy future. It is not. The best hydrogen, green hydrogen, derived from electrolysis, if used wisely and efficiently, can be that path to a sustainable future. Blue hydrogen is totally different. The green hydrogen, on the other hand, is really awesome, and I believe sooner or later it is the future. So what are the common misconceptions? Hitting the like button doesn't change anything, just kidding. But hitting the like button helps out this channel a ton. 
Misconception number one, hydrogen energy is not all that energy efficient. Now, this is an interesting one. Elon Musk repeatedly said, hydrogen is mind boggling stupid and staggeringly dumb, etc. However, as much as I'm impressed by his achievements on a professional level, given his background, there is the possibility that these statements are the result of a conflict of interest and his focus is on hydrogen for passenger transportation. This is the efficiency for hydrogen in transportation, for passenger vehicles anyway. The numbers vary a bit with time and source, but the ballpark and message are always consistent. If you start with a certain amount of electricity from renewable energy sources, getting that in a battery of an electric vehicle results in a 6% loss of the original total. However, creating hydrogen with it results in a 32% loss. Further, that's not where the smackdown ends. Inside the car, another 17% of the original electricity total is lost in a battery of an electric vehicle to make it do what you want. Drive to the beach, for example. In a hydrogen electric vehicle, on the other hand, another 35% of the original total is lost. That means 77% of the electricity supply was used in making the battery-powered car move from place to place. The rest, 23%, was lost or wasted, whereas only 33% of the electricity was used to move the hydrogen-powered car from place to place. The rest, 67%, was lost or wasted. Generally speaking, it's of course a big downside to lose 67% of your original electricity supply rather than 23% of it. But again, this research and the resulting chart are focused on light duty passenger vehicles. Hydrogen can still play a role in the transport sector. The vehicle mass and thus the energy required increases exponentially with range for lithium ion batteries, whereas it remains nearly constant for fuel cell electric vehicles. While hydrogen is currently extracted from fossil fuel and is already a multi-billion dollar global industry and in a wide range of industrial applications, it can be produced via renewable energy sources such as solar, wind or biogas. Misconception number two, hydrogen is too expensive. One thing I've realized researching scientific and commercial solutions is that they are constantly evolving. Some quickly, in particular all things digital and some slowly, like heavy industries such as steel and cement. Even if you work in the industry, it is tricky to keep up, let alone working in another industry. The price of green hydrogen has fallen in the recent years, and it is expected that the reduction will be even higher over the next decade, making it truly competitive against other energy solutions. Antonio Vidigal from EDP Innovation reinforces that the cost of hydrogen is not so much in the technology of the infrastructure. The main component of the cost of green hydrogen is the renewable energy from which it is produced via electrolysis, which corresponds to 70% of the total. Misconception number three, hydrogen gas is dangerous to store and use. Let's get this out of our systems right away. Hydrogen is not more dangerous than other flammable fuels or batteries used in electric cars. In fact, vehicles with pressure gas storage tanks are nothing new. With millions of on-the-road miles driven over the last few years, an existing global multi-billion industry transporting and making hydrogen for many years, the automotive industry seems to be more than sufficiently convinced that hydrogen can be stored safely. Misconception number four. Hydrogen is not completely ecological. Of course it isn't. It causes massive amounts of global emissions. It also is at the same time. It simply depends on how hydrogen is produced. And hydrogen can be produced completely carbon neutral. And finally, some fun facts you might not know about hydrogen. Hydrogen is one of the first elements created after the Big Bang. With 75%, hydrogen is the most abundant atom in the universe and the richest energy for stars. The name hydrogen comes from the Greek words hydro, meaning water, and Genesis creation. It was named by French chemist 
Antoine Lavoisier because when it burns, it creates water. The first electrolyzers appeared in 1800, when Nicholson and Carlyle induced a static charge into water. I'd very much appreciate learning about your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and hit the bell. And feel free to check out this video. I think I got it! With 75%, hydrogen is the most abundant at, 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 atom. The vehicle mass and thus the energy exp expired. The expired energy. No longer useful. It's just, it's, it's expired. It causes like stomach aching and stuff.